This episode of the podcast is brought to you by the Tattooed Traveler YouTube channel. Join award-winning TV host and travel expert Todd Newton as he takes you coast to coast and around the globe to destinations like Paris, Rome, Bangkok, Hollywood, Mexico, New York, and so many more. Experience all the world has to offer by visiting the tattooedtraveler.com or subscribe on YouTube at the Tattooed Traveler. Welcome to the host with the most podcast. Podcast. And now, direct from the Razzle Dazzle Studios, here's the tan tattooed connoisseur of conversation, Todd Newton. A couple episodes back, we were talking about that couple that fell in that giant tank of chocolate. Got a lot of good emails on that. And a listener named Singh, which is a beautiful name, by the way, Singh asked if I'd ever had one of those hot chocolate pedicures. She knows I like pedicures, I guess. And I have. Singh, as a matter of fact, loved it. I've also had one of those ones where you they have those special kind of fish, you know, the... Um, fish comes and eats the dead skin. Oh, yeah, and they eat the dead skin. I didn't like that. That was creepy. But I did like the hot chocolate one where you just just you sit out, you're in the massaging spa chair, and then you just mm-hmm. dip your toesies in that warm, hot chocolate. And it just, mm. you, you know, it's weird because none of the chocolate ends up in your mouth, obviously, but boy, just sticking your feet in that thick, gooey, something nice about that. And just feeling it. I'm, I'm sitting over here just thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. And getting shoot. all goozy. I should have done that on my Ooh. bachelor party. I would have preferred that over anything we did. That was a nice that was a nice treat. I want speaking of Dude, my next birthday, that's what I want. <laughs> my next bachelor party. That's what I'm doing at my next one. <laughs> speaking of shoes uh. and uh and feet, psychologists at the University of Kansas have found that you can tell a lot about a person by looking at their shoes. And really? they did a study there that, that found that people were able, in a large percentage of cases, to correctly judge a stranger's age, their gender, how much money they make a year, political affiliation, and other like key personality traits just by looking at their shoes. And really? So what they did, Marie, is they gathered... A bunch of people around, a bunch of people around. They did a, a serious focus group here. Hundreds of people. Oh, yeah. Right around five 500, which, you know, if it's at the University of Kansas, they just went out in the quad and started asking students. Hey, you, know, you guys. Right, right. Here's a Subway. <laughs> we got free hot dogs in here. I was just going to say, here's a Subway gift card. Look at my shoes and tell me what you think. But the, the researchers said that by looking at the style of the shoe, estimating the cost of the shoe, the condition of the shoe, those who participated were able to guess about 90% of the owner's personal characteristics. You cannot tell a political affiliation by someone's shoes. Unless like it's just, you know, unless you look down. Okay, if you see flip-flops, you're probably going to think, liberal right right because i don't yeah. know many concerns yeah and the flip side of that is i guess if you look down and you see cowboy boots all right you're gonna think all right this is probably a conservative i mean listen we don't want to stereotype but let's be honest but i mean like if you're just looking at a pair of nikes or adidas or nice dress shoes how are you gonna tell i don't know that i don't know i'm kind of stumped i can't see your shoes from here what, what kind of shoes are you wearing uh- <laughs> Right now, nothing. <laughs> I love you take your shoes off. I knew it. You always take your shoes. I've just got I've got white sneakers on, you know? I mean, it's just kind of what we do. But I, I think this has got to be one of those just campus studies, huh? Some, you know, when you walk around a college campus, you just see all these booths set up. Getting That's all they to do. Say. Yeah. Uh, happened at the University of Kansas. Interesting. Very interesting. Rock Chalk Jayhawks. That's, yes. That's right. I have a friend, Danny Boatwright. She went on to win Survivor several years ago, but she was the biggest Jayhawk fan. She used to be a model with us on the Price is Right stage show. The next thing you know, she's winning Survivor, but she used to run around saying, Rock Chalk. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Hope she's doing well. Nice girl. Uh, got more of the Toddcast coming up. Let's get back to the talk that will keep you talking. This is the host with the most Toddcast with Todd Newton. And uh, don't forget to pack your bags and 
go on some adventures with me with the Tattoo Traveler YouTube channel. Lots of new destinations up there for you. So uh, tat, uh, tattoo, youtube.com slash at the Tattoo Traveler. Now, admittedly, every now and again, Marie and I get a little preachy when it comes to, you know, we, we try to bestow our, our wisdom upon these younger generations. Yeah. You know, we just don't want you to grow up being soft. You know, I, by the, I know that, that that a lot of things, Maria, are acceptable now or shunned yes. now that weren't when we were growing up in the 70s and 80s. You know, by the time I was 16, I'd been punched in the face more times than I can count. I'd had my heart broken a couple of times and I, just, I used it as lessons. You know, I guess we were right. We were taught to let it make you tougher. But what you said the other night when we were talking we were having the same discussion and you, you brought up water, <laughs> water. I'm like, you know, people now that's like, Oh, I have to have a heavy on water. I have to have sparkling water. It's like, we drank water out the side of a house, out of the side of, I'm sorry. We drank water out of a hose on the side of the house, <laughs> a dirty hose. A dirty and we're one. happy to get it. I remember. It's like your mom would lock the screen door and wouldn't let you back in. Listen, she'd hand you a sandwich for lunch. Listen and, and think about that hose too. You know, you got it. Maybe, maybe your mom or dad or your grandparents took a little bit of time to roll up half of it on that rack that was hanging on the side of the house. But the right, but the the end of the hose, the part you put your your mouth on, was laying in the dirt. And boy, you'd be playing as a kid, sweating in the middle of summer, like this time of year. And then you would go over and turn that hose on, and that water would be scorching hot scorching hot and you didn't care but you you drink it anyway and pass the hose to your little brother or sister <laughs> or your friend so they could get a drink too what you said what you said the other night you said you would stand there and just wait for the water to cool off coming out of that hose and it never did it never, it never did. did we're sitting there thinking like there was a filter inside somewhere oh surely the the uh, refrigeration it's would gonna cool in. off <laughs> It's 115 <laughs> degrees out here. Oh, God. Oh. I just, I, that. It, the, but you learn from that. The water hose analogy. I don't know if that's an analogy or a metaphor, but the water hose comparison completely describes the changes in generations. You just, you pegged it so perfectly. And we never complained because we didn't know any better. No. But now. Uh -uh. We were just happy that we had water. Now the moms are bringing out ice cold bottles of water with a little bit of Mio's flavoring. You know, asking asking Hunter if he wants lemonade or black cherry pomegranate. Asking, oh, I know. Asking Tyler, you know, if. And they're unscrewing the <laughs> lids. Lids. <laughs> lids. Ha. I remember when I spit on your lid. When when bottles of water came out, I thought it was the stupidest fad. I never would have thought that it, it would become the thing. But it has. No. Everybody it's like those pods of coffee. It's like why can't I just make a whole pot? Right. Right. I got I got somebody in my inner circle who whenever they finish a bottle of water, they crush it against their chest loudly, saying that, you know, it, it conserves room in the trash for recycling. I'm like, first of all, we can talk about recycling at some point. If you think everything you throw in the recycle bin is getting recycled, you got you got to read some articles because, huh. <laughs> because it ain't. But the, no. the crushing of the water bottles has become an unnecessary annoyance around here. Not to sound like a curmudgeon, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, listen. I don't care how old you are right now. Let's make today national take a drink of water out of the garden hose day. And let's put life back in perspective, man. I'm Maria Todd shining a light on the goodness that is a good old fashioned dirty child. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for keeping the art of conversation alive. For more Todd, visit ToddNewtonOnline.com. And don't forget to rate and review the show today. The host with the most Toddcast is produced by the host with the most LLC. All rights reserved.